Archie Luxury was born in 1972. 1972, a very special year for Australia because it was the, uh, the start of the It's Time campaign. And after such a long period of conservative government, the Labour Party was about to come in. Archie Luxury entered this world under a conservative government, but things were a chain changing. It was time for change. And this is Archie Luxury's childhood home in Indoor Pili. That's right. This is the home that Archie, as a child, came home to from the hospital. That's right. Archie's childhood home. In a couple of years' time, this home was going to be flooded completely. And uh, Archie's parents decided to move out. But... Um, the the childhood home still bears bears many um many memories for uh one year old archie archie luxury archie's education really took off when he moved into the suburb of jamboree heights this is where archie's education was going to boom state education that is his parents couldn't afford private school in 1976, Archie Luxury, the young Archibald Chesterfield III, went to preschool. 1976. And uh, this was his first introduction to state education. This was his, uh, his very first preschool. His preschool education. 1976, Archie Luxury. This is his preschool. And in 1976, Archibald Chesterfield III learned a few things about luxury. This is the luxury sand pit. And whilst Archibald was playing in the luxury sand pit, Archibald discovered a few truths about luxury. That's right, luxury. One of the other kids had peanuts. Archibald Chesterfield III had cashew nuts. Cashew nuts. Archie learned there was a very big pricing difference between peanuts and cashew nuts. The peanut is the working class nut, whereas the cashew nut is the luxury nut of choice. The luxury nut 
of choice. 1976. Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury school days and uh, Archie Luxury came to Jamboree Heights State School and the classroom right in front of us was Archie Luxury's grade one block. This was grade one Archie Luxury style and uh, although it seems to be a bit of a uh, botanical gardens now it was quite barren and a little bit dusty but this was Archibald's grade one class and uh, he learned here not to trust other students and uh, he started his uh, his primary school education in this block here this is Archibald Chesterfield the first this is his year one block, C block, C block. And this is the, this is the classroom itself, the very classroom that Archibald enjoyed. He enjoyed this block. This was 1977, the year that Elvis Presley died. This is the, this is his year one block. And uh, this is the school. The school that Archie Luxury, this is the school that Archie Luxury went to. Here we are, the school. Archie Luxury's year seven block. This was Archie Luxury's year six and seven block. This is where Archie learned to, uh, he learned to, uh, what did he learn? He continued that distrust of people. Year six and seven at Jamboree Heights State School. And this is the very, very area at Archie Luxury's primary school where Archie slipped over and scratched his first semi-decent Swiss watch. A Technos, he scratched it on the concrete as he was running around the school. He scratched his Technos and thus ended Archie Luxury's love of the shitter. Yes, I'm at my old school. This is my first high school, Oxley State High. And uh, this is where I started. I came here in 1985. No, I came here. 85 and 86. There you go. There's an old uh, sign there. This is the old abandoned high school. This is where I started my secondary education and uh, I gotta be honest with you it's kinda sad to come back now in later life but have a look here I'll show you my uh, my first classroom the first classroom was way at the end there second from the end the one on the very end that was actually an add-on but it was actually that classroom there that was my form class, year eight. Eight, I think I was 8A. That was my, uh, my form class, 8A. And uh, I had a good time at Oxley State High. That's where I had my taste for Asian women. Started here, this is the, uh, the school. Oxley State High. Da 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 da
Ah, I can't remember the words, but uh, that's exactly where it is. Oxley State High. And uh, I tell you what, for the Archie Luxury movie, it would be wrong, it would be wrong not to have Oxley State High featured in the movie. It would be wrong not to have Oxley State High. And uh, that's the, the admin block. It's all gone derelict now. And over there was the manual arts, the manual arts, that was the graphic, graphic arts, that's right, graphic arts and manual arts, that was the, the block there. And uh, Archie didn't do, he only did manual arts in year eight because he knew, Archie was very wise, he knew all the furniture would be coming from China, China. So Archie did typing, that's right, because Archie saw that computers we're going to take over the world very, 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 very futuristic, our Archibald Chesterfield. And Archie knew he had to cook. He had to cook. So he did home ec. Home ec. Home ec. Over in this block here, that was home ec. Right at the end was Archie's home economics block. Uh, he knew that he needed to feed a monster. He needed to be able to feed a monster. So he learnt home ec and uh, he also did the typing. The typing. He did typing which was right underneath the admin block. That's right. This is where Archie used to learn to type. These were manual. Right down the bottom there they were manual typewriters. Archie knew the Chinese were going to bring in imports. No point in learning woodwork or metalwork. Manufacturing industries in the Western world were going to be on the shitter. That's right. So Archie knew the best thing he could do was uh, learn typing for these new computers and the home ec with all the sexy girls. <clears throat> Oxley State High. The next phase of Archie's life started off with a, uh, a rather sad situation. Whilst Archie was in high school, his mother unfortunately passed away. Archie was, uh, it's obviously a very, very hard thing for a, uh, a young person to lose a parent. It's a very, very harsh reality of life and uh, life doesn't always go your way. With this sadness and grief and everything like that, Archie um, started a small business, small little computer business, selling hard disk drives and uh, computer parts and pieces. He started off selling, the first item Archie sold was a, uh, a 30 gig Seagate hard disk, an ST238R. And... His business seemed to do pretty well. Archie maybe found his calling in life there. And although he had the grief of uh, losing a parent, he had some comfort in knowing that uh, he found something to do. And it certainly kept Archie away from drugs and alcohol. And it kept him focused on running a small business. So once Archie finished high school, he... He gave university a try, didn't really, didn't really, didn't really pop, didn't really float. So he went straight into the small business. The small business called Centenary Computers. Centenary Computers. Selling computers for, for um, companies like Optima, OCT Optima, Total Peripherals selling all sorts of uh, systems and solutions. The business had its ups and its downs there. It, um, it's like any small business. You can have a bit of success, but uh, it can be very fleeting. The hardest thing about being successful is staying successful. It rode its, its course up and downs. The computer market was uh, one of these areas where things could be discounted. Could be discounted. And Archie then 
Um, in the early 90s, revamped the business. Instead of having high retail rents, he just ran it from home and it was successful. He managed to get a little BMW. Oh, my God, Archie. If you had have invested that in a uh, diversified share portfolio, you'd be very rich. But Archie likes a bit of consumer glam. So the, the computer business ran pretty well. Archie's life was starting to have a happy ending. He very foolishly got married so young. This was the days before Tinder, before online dating. No, you had to ask girls out. It was damn hard, especially in a place like Australia. Archie'd never heard of Asia. It was a, um, a brutal wake-up call. And Archie married too quickly. Everything in Archie's life was fast-paced and moving quickly. He had his business to concentrate on. So he married quickly. And before you know, Archie had more more people on the Archie bus. Archie had a wife and two children. And a mortgage. And a commercial property mortgage. And car payments. And although Archie made a fair bit of money, it was an insatiable appetite to pay the payments and keep everyone happy. It was a, uh, it was okay when things were great. Archie had his freedom. He had his prestige of being successful. But it's like a lot of things in life there. Sometimes markets change, competition gets great. The computer industry was no different. It was inevitable that things would would not end very well there. Sometimes being a good manager is knowing when to get out of something. Stop flogging the dead horse. By late 1999, Archie had realized the the business he was running, Centenary Computers, really wasn't that fabulous or fantastic. Burdened with mortgage, commercial property payments, uh, loan payments, two small children and a wife who didn't work, Archie started to suffer depression as his career, his business, his livelihood started making very, very little money. It was a very hard time. The new millennium, year 2000, was a turning point. Early in 2000, Archie closed his computer business. Closed the business. No, he didn't go bankrupt. No, all bills were paid. Everyone was paid out. But Archie got a job. Archie got a contracting job. A job to do. A contracting job. This was Archie's first proper job because Archie, even though he was 28 years old, he'd basically always worked for himself. There was a time he did a bit of admin work for his father's accountancy and tax business, tax preparation business, but he'd really always done his own thing. So this was Archie's first proper job at 28 years old. Archie, in 2000. And one was earning 35,000 Aussie dollars a year. Archie hated the job. Archie hated, hated life in general. It was bad. The depression had started to come into Archie's life. It was in 2002, Archie was going to find out about being retrenched. Archie's depression was so bad, the only thing he looked forward to was sleep. And lie down and just want to sleep. Just want to forget his problems. Want to forget everything. It was a very hard time. 2002. 29. And fired. Retrenched. Booted. Flying to Bangkok for the first time in 2002, I remember saying to God, saying to God that if he could get me a girlfriend, 
like one of these stewardesses on the airplane. I'd do anything. It was so magical. These Asian women were fantastic. But these Asian women weren't exactly what I had uh, built up a picture in my mind. Sure, they were graceful. Sure, they were delicate. Sure, they were charming. But landing and going into the streets of Nana, the first trip into Bangkok of my life was, to say, a bit of an eye-opener. It was an absolutely amazing experience, like nothing I'd ever seen before. Archie lived in Nana for two years, from 2002 to 2004. He found a lot of delightful creatures, but uh, one thing about Nana is you can't find love in a Bangkok bar. That's right. You can take the girl out of the bar, but you can't take the bar out of the girl, big boy. For two years, Archibald Chesterfield III settled into life in Bangkok. Bangkok. He had a wonderful time. He lived in the place called Nana. It was a little place on off Sukhumvit Road and uh, sure it was a little bit sleazy but uh, the girls all seemed to like him and uh, as long as Archie had a little bit of coin, Archie was working in Bangkok, well sort of working, uh, just don't tell the, the ties, uh, Archie was uh, able to uh, sustain himself and uh, keep things happening. Archie had a great time, he could go to the, the club and uh, the girls who were dancing there, well they, they sort of seemed to um, take on different attributes compared to um, the girls in uh, Archie's neighborhood. So it was hedonistic, it was fun, it was amazing. It was everything that uh, Archie could want in a place. The wonderful thing about this place called Bangkok, even the girls who worked in um, pharmacies and uh, general stores were delightful, beautiful, slim Asian creatures. Helpful, delightful, subservient, Asian creatures. Archie couldn't get enough of Asia. Archie had a great time. Asia was everything he wanted to. The women loved him. Well, at least they they pandered to his needs. And uh, Archie Archie had a fantastic time in this in the land of smiles. The land of smiles. Eventually, Archie uh, started to understand the tricks that would happen. It wasn't long before Archie decided to settle down a bit and uh, find his own piece of uh, Thai, Thai comfort. He, uh, he found a nice lady. Um, yes, he found her in Nana. And Archie settled down. Archie settled down and uh, he uh, continued to enjoy the delights of the club. Uh, much to uh, the new uh, lady's um, um, disappointment and uh, frustration, but uh, Archie was having the time of his life. He was working, working in Thailand, photographing wristwatches and marketing them for uh, sale in, in America on forums and eBay and, and uh, other places like that there. And uh, Archie then at night time would uh, have a few quiet drinks with um, some delightful creatures and uh, settle in for a, a bit of an early night and uh, a bit of a cuddle.
It all sounded fantastic. It all really was great there. But um, it's like so many things like this here. Archie would eventually stuff it up. Yes, Archie would eventually stuff it up. He, um, yeah, he, uh, he eventually, that lucrative high-paid job which allowed him to support his family back home and his new family in Thailand eventually ended and uh, Archie um, needed to find a, a way to support himself. Unfortunately, with uh, being, the, being the victim of uh, uh, white privilege, Archie was uh, sort of disadvantaged. He didn't really have a lot of working capital to kickstart a business or, or do something creative. And uh, Thailand ain't no place to be if you... Uh, it ain't no place to be to coast. This is a place for uh, hard work and uh, play hard, uh, party hard. But uh, yes, eventually the fun of bangers came to a, uh, a crashing halt there. It, uh, it can be a brutal place. Thailand can be a great place to holiday, but bangers can be an awful place to scratch out a living. Can be very, very hard. Hard indeed, Archibald. Hard, hard, hard yards indeed. You know, you know jewelry store or good tailor? You know good tailor? Yeah, yeah. You know where good jewelry store or good tailor? <laughs> uh, and uh, eventually it was time for Archie Luxury to um, find another way of supporting the hedonistic lifestyle. It was... Uh, Game over, Archie. Bangkok was game over. Time to head back and uh, face the music, big boy. In 2004, things weren't going so well. Archie's job that he'd maintained in Bangkok had... Uh, had ended with Archie storming off and Archie working for himself. Archie's ex-wife, that's right, the wife that he had in Australia had worked out that uh, Archie had a new Asian lady friend. Her quests for money and uh, support were insatiable. Archie had promised her a trip to back to her home country and uh, she she now wanted that fulfilled. Archie had uh, used his credit cards to fund this new business of his. He never really had enough seed capital to do it right. So with payments due very soon on the Amex card, it was inevitable before Archie suffered a uh, a stroke of bad luck. Archie had two two expensive Rolexes stolen while sent by FedEx. Archie had a number of issues with the Thai Postal Service with items just going missing. Archie also had to keep the house payments at home going. He had two families to support, one in Thailand and one in Australia. With limited income, it was inevitable before the crash wasn't pleasant. Things weren't looking good. Before you knew it, within a couple of months, Archie had uh, churned up a lot of a lot of credit on his credit card to fund living costs, and now the balance was due. Archie came back to Australia in 2004. He moved in to his dad's dad's rental home, rent free. His wife didn't want him back. No, she wouldn't want him back after he'd had multiple Asian ladies but in between. There was no way that could be fixed. She wanted the divorce. No problems. Archie came back. He hated IT. He he he'd struggled for so long to try and find an IT job last time when he was was in Australia doing IT work he just wanted to do something completely different Archie became a taxi driver a taxi driver for black and white cabs 
And this was a huge, huge loss for our very proud Archie. To be a proud, self-employed, successful businessman who had a a beautiful European car, to suddenly have absolutely nothing, to suddenly be driving taxis, to be the absolute bottom rung in society, to be down and out, down and out, to be working long hours for very little coin. It was a hard reality to face, but this was the truth. This was the truth. Archie... What little money he got out of the divorce settlement went on paying off the credit cards. Archie was living rent free. Archie didn't even have a car. He didn't even have a car. He rented a X yellow cab for seventy dollars a week with nine hundred and ninety thousand kilometers on the clock. It was what you would term a shitter. A shitter. Whenever you parked it next to people, people didn't park near you because they didn't want their car next to your sort of car. It was the uh, complete opposite to what Archie was used to. Times were tough. People said hello. He hid and pretended he didn't know them. The shame, the indignity, the shame, the shame of the shame of the whole matter. It was a very hard time. The only thing that kept Archie going was he was working such long hours. Taxi driving either starts at 4 a.m. or it ends at 4 p.m. Starts at 4 a.m. or starts at 4 p.m. It's a 12-hour shift, sunshine. 12-hour shift in the taxi. And when Archie came home, besides having a very quick meal, the only thing Archie wanted to do was sleep. Sleep. And in some ways there was probably the best thing because he couldn't contemplate his fall in society, the status loss. He couldn't contemplate the losses that he'd incurred, the disaster that was his ex-marriage, the disaster, the disaster that was his life. It was a very, very hard way to exist. Very hard very uncomfortable way to exist. The depression, the depression. Could life get any worse? Driving taxis, living in his old man's house, not even being able to pay rent, just, just struggling to reduce debt, get back on his feet. Archie dreamed of going back to zero. Zero was a magical place where... where he wished to be. It was a very, very hard life indeed. Then. And um, he was hugely depressed. The depression. The indignity of it all. The indignity. It was hard. He was over 30. He had no girlfriend. He had no money. No car. Nothing. Nothing. There was nothing Archie got enjoyment or sustenance out of it was like the depressionary times no money no honey no nothing archie luxury's life was at an all-time low he had success from his business he couldn't start up another computer business that market was crap that was terrible he couldn't get a job in IT. That was next to impossible to, to achieve. He'd, he'd already gone through there, applying for jobs. Oh, my God. He just wanted to jump in a car and drive a taxi. Archie was reduced from being a successful small business person to being a taxi driver. The disgrace. The embarrassment, the indignity. Archie had hit the lowest point in his life. Everything was grim. Everything was hopeless. Everything was a disaster. This was Archie at his worst. The depression, the indignity of it all.
Archie Luxury decided that on his return to Australia from Bangkok, he would do any job. He drove taxis. He drove taxis because he couldn't stand the IT industry. The IT industry, the computer industry. But uh, after a couple of uh, months driving taxis, Archie realized there was a job worse than IT. Taxi driving. One of these things about life is it teaches you very quickly how, how to survive and how to float. And taxi driving was something that Archie wanted to ditch really quickly. Archie applied for his first IT job in the city of Brisbane. And guess what? Archie boy managed to score an IT gig. It started off with a government department who shall remain, remain anonymous to protect the guilty. Archie was now working in the big smoke. He went from contract to contract, earning a lower middle class income. This helped Archie survive. He, uh, he kind of liked the IT stuff, mucking around with computers, mucking around with software and hardware, and most importantly, Archie's favorite work time practice. Testing the internet connectivity, a.k.a. surfing at work. Surfing at work. That's right. Archie loved to uh, Google and YouTube life in general. Anything that was a diversion from the mundaneness that was life as an IT professional, Archie was happy to do. He could justify anything. He could justify anything as long as he kept the systems running, Archie enjoyed it. He worked for many government departments before finally snagging a job with his favorite American firm, KBR, Kellogg, Brown and Root. Archie enjoyed the corporate environment in a prestige office in a cubicle, Archie's cubicle. He didn't have an office, he had a cubicle, but it was in a prestige building in the... Uh, in the nice part of town, in the city of Brisbane. Eventually, Archie got himself an office. That's right. He got himself an office. And uh, Archie's career for a while looked like it was actually going to pan out. Archie was the uh, middle-aged IT professional. He looked good in a, a suit and a tie. And... Uh, Archie had that realistic characteristic called portliness. That's right. He, he looked the part. And uh, whilst Archie enjoyed doing IT cabling and doing IT fixing, installing networks, uh, moving stuff and installing stuff, it was all very good there. But uh, it was going to be short-lasting. Career depression syndrome. Career depression syndrome. Archie was uh, lower tier, lower tier in the food chain, and uh, he turned to a bit of drink to help ease the pain, ease the squeeze, big boy, ease the squeeze. And uh, part of Archie's career depression promotions went to Sydney ciders and Melbourneians. Archie was stuck in the Brisbane office with um, limited career prospects. He was stabbed many times. Many of Archie's IT bosses knew nothing about IT, but they were quick to criticize our Archie. In desperation, Archie changed industries. When KBR gave him the boot, the ass, the goodbye, Archie then joined a... Um, a waste processing plant. That's right. Archie could ditch the tie and suit and uh, put it on for a fluoro vest. And this is where Archie enjoyed a lot of notoriety. He was big amongst the garbage men. He was big amongst the garbage men. He did network support and also helped them clean out the bins. What a perfect combo meal deal. And uh, it involved Archie's favorite stuff, rubbish, rubbish. And Archie liked the smell and the fumes and the diesel and, ah, oh, it was just so wonderful. 
going around to all the different sites performing IT type functions. Archie's YouTube career started to take off and uh, unfortunately all the fans one day people get very very jealous especially in the workplace so what happened is because Archie was married at the time and uh, he uh, he had a lot of fans who were sending alcohol cases of beer and booze Archie decided to get them redirected to work. That's a good, safe environment. He didn't want them left out in the sun and the rain. Unfortunately, what happened was the uh, nosy secretary said, hey, what are all these gifts? And Archie said, hey, well, I can't make enough out of IT, so I do a little bit of work as a comedian on YouTube. And uh, sure enough, it spread like wildfire. It spread like wildfire until Archie was advised to please explain his views on marriage had been really misinterpreted. The women folk didn't like his Bangkok videos, his um, horology videos. Archie was finally let go due to the politically co incorrect nature of his work as a comedian. This is the life of the IT contractor. Don't piss people off or you won't actually have a job. At this point here, Archie decided to... Uh, um, well, actually, I don't think Archie decided. The reality was he was completely unemployable. Employers were now doing Google searches and finding out who their middle-aged, overweight, new staff were. Archie couldn't get a job anywhere, so he decided to make YouTube videos full-time, big boy. <laughs> When Archie Luxury flew the ditch to New Zealand, he was amazed at the high cost of hotels in Auckland. Archie Luxury vlogged this on his Archie Luxury channel and the Kiwi Press, the New Zealand press, exploded. Suddenly, Archie's Luxury's hatred for high prices in New Zealand was public fodder. Archie Luxury was interviewed on the top rating The Project series in New Zealand. That's right, Archie Luxury was interviewed on the very, very popular top rating The Project New Zealand. Archie Luxury was, um, how would you put this? Archie Luxury was cornered. They cornered him. They were nasty to him, but at least it was press. Any press is good publicity. And when you're on national television, it can't hurt. It can't hurt indeed. The next press clip was actually TV in Australia. That's right. Archie appeared on the Devonair Fox show. This was just before he nearly died getting there. Take a look at this. Hey there, this week's guest has amassed over 30 million views. He's also made international headlines thanks to his controversial opinions. He almost died getting to this interview. True story, he's known as Archie Luxury, but also as Paul Pluta. Hey, take a seat, take a seat. Alrighty, you almost died getting to this interview. Let's just start with that. <clears throat> almost died getting here. Before uh, we roll the cameras, you're showing us a, a recording. And, and, and why you put me at risk? I nearly died. You understand that? I nearly died on your plane. Excuse me, sir. I nearly died on that plane. You understand that? Yes, but they're trying to take. Where are they going? You're a coward. Essentially, you confronting the captain. Yes. What do we do then? Yell and scream at the captain. Well, Just to rehash, mm -hmm. right? You have mm -hmm. one of the most colourful lives I think I've ever heard of. Just sitting down before when we were getting sort of mic'd up and things like that. You're telling me about tours you were doing. You're telling me about mm -hmm. people you're accompanying around, uh, mm -hmm. doing uh, all sorts of different things. About, about the, the YouTube channel, you do all sorts of, you have a safety deposit box. On it goes, right? Yep, yep. I'm a, I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a very, very unique individual. Mm. I'm unemployable. I'm completely unemployable. Mm. I, 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 uh, <laughs> I could not do anything else. I've uh, I've been sacked from numerous jobs because of my YouTube profile. Yeah, yeah. I've revealed the truth, mm. and I got sacked from a, wa a waste processing plant.
for my views. Look, controversial opinions uh, all over uh, uh, YouTube. You, you are not, um, uh, should I say, you're forthright with, with your opinions, right? So, so how do you get from um, uh, being another person walking down the streets of Brisbane to someone mm -hmm. who is literally jet setting and... So how, how do you, I just don't understand how you go yes. from point A to point B. Well, look, it's, it's very simple. I, I look at luxury goods from the arse end. I don't buy anything new. Everything is second hand. I was not, I was, I'm a working class man. Mm. That's what I am. I am a working class man. So it, it's just through pure cunning, pure cunning that I've gotten anywhere. It's yeah. life skills. Like you've got, you've got, you've got, you've got certain things there that you need. Tell me a little bit more about this stuff because you're knowing on your YouTube channel, looking at the comments section and things like that, as a controversial YouTuber. Look, and I don't see anything that's controversial <coughs> other than what we just I, talked about. This is about. exactly it. This is mainstream. I, I'm, I'm very much, I suppose, I am the type of person, I am the thoughts of a normal person, mm. but I say it. Yeah. I say no it. No filter. No filter. No yeah. filter. That's However, Archie's fame really took off with some press coverage in the online press. News Corp, that's right, the Murdoch, the Murdoch-owned monopoly conglomerate featured Archie Luxury when he was on a... Thai Airways flight coming back from Thailand and it made an emergency emergency landing at Bali. Uh, Archie's Luxury's footage was used on the news.com.au channel and uh, it also featured Archie Luxury's press release that he wrote. Archie's TV presence certainly wasn't short-lived there, no. Archie, uh, Archie made a few, quite a few appearances on TV. In fact, Archie's uh, most famous appearance on TV came with the, uh, the sacking of a state government transport minister when Archie started to kick the shit out of QR. Archie wasn't going to stand for it, so uh, Archie did what any self-respecting man would do there. Archie fought the system! Archie fought the system, and Archie, Archie in the process, uh, Archie started away. QR's got no one to blame except themselves. Paul Pluter is the whistleblower behind documents which revealed the extent of the driver shortage. It's the executives at QR who should be ashamed of themselves. They should get out of their statesman, get out of their 5 Series BMW and take the train. With ministers squirming, that wasn't the ultimate pleasure of Archie Luxury's achievements. No, it was when a Y Jenner from New York put an episode together all about Archie Luxury. There was a cult following who was following Archie Luxury. Today we're talking Archie Luxury. What is your opinion of Archie Luxury? I have been asked this question, I don't want to say dozens, because that'd be an understatement. Um, I don't, well, I guess it is dozens, because not hundreds. So, but dozens of times. People always are looking for uh, my opinion on Archie Luxury. I think he's kind of funny. I think he's I think he's sad more than anything else because you know he, I mean, he just you know says a lot of like self-deprecating shit you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. He's just being honest. Um, I guess more so than anything else, he's honest, which is actually very interesting because everyone else is such a you know such a, a liar. Because I think that uh, he seems like a cool guy. As Archie's fame grew, men wanted to be like him, and if they couldn't be like him, they wanted to be with him. If they couldn't be with him, they wanted to be photographed with him. The success that is Archie Luxury, men, women l craved him, and men wanted to be him. Archie Luxury, the international. Man of mystery and mystique, Archie Luxury, the famous YouTube celebrity. But that wasn't the only time Archie Luxury made it into the press. No, CY Interview. CY Interview featured a expose on Archie Luxury themselves there. Luxury's Jekyll and Hyde, Koof and Classy. Paul Pluta creates crass and cunning Archie Luxury, run by Chris Yandek. And Archie was asked back again. That's right, CY Interview couldn't get enough of Archie Luxury, but that wasn't the crowning achievement. No, Archie Luxury's great hero, great mentor, a blog to watch with Ariel Adams, featured Archie Luxury himself. That's right, a long 
hour-long interview was recorded for the Blog to Watch channel. This is the number one leading watch channel, and they wanted to hear Archie Luxury. She also made it into Coconut Singapore. That's right. Archie's video on Archie Luxury calls Singapore pretentious and nasty in obscene rant. Archie was featured on Coconut Singapore. They made an article and they even referenced his YouTube channel. But the crowning achievement of press coverage came from Brisbane Times, a Fairfax publication. Queensland Rail Fiasco, who is Brisbane's rail advocate, Paul Pluter. He was featured explaining the situation and what had happened and everything was laid out there for the viewers. This was Archie Luxury getting the press and the coverage he deserves. And uh, if that wasn't if that wasn't crazy enough, the next thing is Archie Luxury the racehorse. That's right. That's right. Archie Luxury had the ultimate honour of having a racehorse named after himself. A racehorse. I mean, this is the sport of kings. This nag is a winner, just like Archie Luxury himself. However, the greatest part for Archie wasn't press coverage, wasn't appearing on the news service or appearing on TV, but it was a billionaire who flew Archie halfway around the world to meet him. That's right. The humble billionaire. A humble billionaire in Jakarta, Indon Indonesia, wanted Archie to come and meet him and personal assistant at his beck and call. Archie had the time of his life. Archie was put up at the, the Grand Hyatt. And uh, it was a, an experience that Archie will never, ever forget. It was amazing, absolutely amazing to see a fantastic trip. And Archie was the star performer that Archie is. Archie enjoyed himself thoroughly. Archie loved Jakarta, Archie loved the Mercedes, Archie loved the Grand Hyatt. Highlight of Archie's YouTube career, meeting a humble billionaire who wanted to meet the world famous Archibald Chesterfield III. Archie Luxury had the time of his life in Indonesia. The fame of being Archie Luxury. Archie Luxury, the method actor, the actor's actor, the method actor. And I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, the method actor that is Archie Luxury. You gotta get the pain happening to really feel, feel that part in the movie. <clears throat> the actor's actor, the method actor. And uh, if it was for real, if this was for real, I would have died years ago. I would have died years ago. And uh, uh, Nana Kim may not have never happened. May not have never happened there. Archie Luxury, the method actor, I put myself into that situation with feeling and, uh, and uh, spirit, some spirit. Some spirits. I put my, myself into that role there and play it to the best of my ability. Without further ado, fuckers, I'd like you to take a look. This is the, the first video of Archie himself for the channel. Hello and welcome to Archie Luxury, Luxury Channel. Today we've got a great improvement we'd like to announce to all our YouTube viewers. We're moving away from still shot photography and we're moving towards digital video technology. That's right, the Archie Luxury Channel has taken the Gauntlet up one step. Many people have requested that we shoot video with a video camera and we've decided to listen to our viewers. That's right. In the up and coming episodes we'll be having uh, a look at Archie's personal study. We're looking at Archie's 
magazines that he reads, where he gets his knowledge on luxury goods. We'll also be taking a look at a luxury scrapyard where they scrap luxury automobiles. And we'll also be taking an in-depth look at some of Archie's classic luxury goods uh, and showing the, the, how they look with a, um, we'll be t we're taking a complete look at them with a, a, a digital video camera and showing all the trinkets that come with a luxury purchase. So please, I hope you um, applaud the, the advancement in technology and I hope you enjoy the channel and please continue to come to my websites www.collectinglouisvuitton.com and www.luxurytolast.com Thanks very much and don't forget to click like for this video to encourage Archie to make more videos. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program Fuckers! Hello Fuckers! And today we're starting a new project. We're starting a new project. <coughs> we're going to make Mr. Bullshit! Mr. Bullshit! Now, fuckers, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to build an identity of a man a man, fuckers, a man who looks absolutely minted for the least amount of money. So Archibald, what the fuck is your problem? What the fuck is your fucking problem? You want to renege on a deal? You want to renege on a contract that we signed? Aren't you a man of your word, you pathetic slimy grub? Aren't you a man of, of substance? You fucking piece of shit! So Archibald, you want a, um... You want to, you want your soul back. Yes, okay, 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 okay. You can have your soul back. And uh, let me ask you this. What's wrong with promoting shitter watches? I've just signed a deal for you. If you would have stayed, you stupid asshole. If you would have stayed, I've got a, um, I've got a $15 Hong Kong watch with a nasty, nasty, nasty nasty Chinese movement in it and uh, I was we were going to sell to the punters for five hundred dollars a piece there was a big wedge in it for you Archie all you needed to do was show the polo players <clears throat> the aristocrats prancing around on horses and have some tie-in to these pieces of shit. That's all you needed to do to get a wedge of the pie. But no, no, you don't want to promote shitters. Well, Archibald, there's many things I don't want to do either. <clears throat> Hello, it's uh, Trevor, Trevor Gertrude from ANZ Funds Management. And uh, da Daryl from 24 Hour Discount Plumbing was our small business community leader who won the ANZ Small Business Incentive Program. And uh, well, what we've done is we've decided to help Daryl expand the 24 Hour Discount Plumbing business. So we've we've taken uh, ANZ has uh, has uh, taken Daryl overseas into the the asia pacific region and uh one of the one of the places that our uh, anz uh does business is uh uh the, the 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 wonderful kingdom of thailand and uh we're in the, the 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 capital the capital of thailand bangkok we're helping daryl expand his 24-hour discount plumbing business so uh please enjoy me as we go around and help daryl to uh, look at business opportunities. G'day, it's Daryl from Discount 24 Hour Plumbing and uh, I've got a gig, I've got a little gig. I've, uh, I've won the ANZ Bank uh, Small Business in Your Community Awards and they've sent me out on a, uh, a business opportunity. Uh, business opportunity, whatever the 
fucking cunt little said there. So anyhow, I'm 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 in I'm in Bangkok and uh, I, I'm I'm doing a bit of a uh, a uh, HSNE audit for this hotel. I got a little bit of consultant work, if you know what I mean. Good day, it's Daryl from Twenty Four Hour Discount Plumber. I'm just doing a bit of a HSNE audit. And uh, I love this. You gotta love these these home handyman. Look at this. Look at this. The nasty fuckers are using packing tape as industrial as industrial tape. Look at this. That's not fucking ISO certified. That's for sure. That's not IS. That's that's not a safety answer. And uh, look at this. They had a bit of a hole in the wall, and they decided to use an old elevator button. Well. Fuck! The modern day Archie! The modern day Archie. I tell you what, you know, when you get to your 40s, you really, really learn not to worry about status, your position in life. You just really don't give a flying fuck. And I gotta tell you, for a while there, I kind of wanted YouTube success and, and ratings and, you know, there's a lot of effort. There's a lot of, lot of viewers who can afford a $50 Seiko or a hundred dollar dress watch who want to be told they want their ass licked that they bought a great watch when the reality is it's a piece of fucking shit this is the reality so you know when i entered my 40s my mentor Suckerhorn said that you'd start to change and settle as a man and it's absolutely true i have completely completely decided i'm only going to make stuff that i want to do i want to go places that i want to do and i don't want to I don't want to sell $50 chronometers. I don't want to sell. I don't want to recommend $500 shitters that I know deep down are garbage and morally bankrupt. I don't want to put my name on a $900 US diver that is really a piece of shit. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. The real Archie. The real Archie. The Archie who's never seen on the camera at all. This is an interesting thing. Who is the real Archie? And the real honest truth is, is that the real Archie, the real Archie is that guy in the office. The real Archie is the, the humble guy who does his job and oh, goes bullshit. home. Oh, bullshit. Tell him that I'm the real Archie, oh, the, mate. The real Can I tell him the real Archie? The real Archie is boring. The real Archie is boring. This is the whole thing is that all of us... No, the real... The, the, <laughs> tell us about the real Archie, mate. You know, like the, 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 you know how you, you love your family and your kids. Well, and and you what's know, most important in life. Tell look, us about the real Archie, look, mate. Look, it, it, the reality is, John, it's, uh, it's always... I think that you've got to be as a good, good... Performer, you got to keep a little bit to yourself, you know. We're not talking about performers, we're talking about the real the Archie. real Archie. It's very difficult. These are, these are very soft spots to, to intrude on. Look, of course, you know, John, I care for, for a lot of people there. The children, you always want your kids to do well. You want them to to have a... Find happiness. I think that's You the love thing. your kids, don't you? I do love my kids. Which one do you love the most? Look, John, I love all those kids. The Equally, same, don't you? Same. That's exactly it, John. And i got to tell you, you know, I try my best for them. Um, I've, kind of, I've kind of seen many interesting things in my life there. And, um, you know... You're only human, aren't you? I'm mate? only human. I'm only human, but... Uh, About one and a half humans, but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> only human, John. And I've got to tell you, John, it's uh, it's a very, very, you know, that there is a nice side to Archie, but that's not really interesting. It's not saleable. People don't want to see that on the channel. They want the drama. People want drama. That's why they watch soap operas and they, they watch, you know, all this sort of uh, situation comedies because it's it's compacted. It's very compacted. Into okay, well, let's have a bit of drama then. Bit of drama. <laughs> Lovely girl, thank you so much for saying hello. Hi. 
Bye-bye. Hello, how are you? Hooters, where is Hooters? This one, it's, this one is for one day. They have good food? Good food, yes. Hooters? Yes. What good food do you like? Um, I like... To, but today we I have like almost... Everything. I you like everything? everything? What good food? Pizza? Ribs? No, we have American food. Okay. American, yes. American foods. Thank you too much, girls. Thank you. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. You okay? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Name? Juan, my name is Juan. Juan. Yes. Hello, what's your name? Han. Dan. Dan, yeah. I see, very beautiful. B. Yes, I just say hello to B, okay? Look pretty, very pretty. Hello, how are you? What you up to? Ah, uh, Bangkok bunnies. Yes. Very good. <laughs> so your name is Jeff? Yeah. And you're 30 years old? 31. 31. And you're from Pattaya originally? Near Pattaya. Near Pattaya. Yeah. And how long you live in Bangkok for? One year. One year? Yeah. Wow. So what's your name? Dawan. Dawan. Yes. And uh, how old are you? How do you see? Oh, 30. 36. 36. Yeah. I see. <laughs> Say hello to you. Hello, how are you? I'm What's your name? Fonton. Fonton. And I'm having breakfast with you today. Yeah, you like me, okay? And I'm not, not cheap Charlie for breakfast, eh? Hey? you, you know? So, so how old are you? 35. 35. Look young. Are you? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I see. So, so how old are you? Oh, I ask you. I have no idea. You tell me how old. 35. I see. <laughs> so, Kim, we're talking about Bangkok. But how you live in Chiang Mai. You have no husband. No. I you, stay with my papa, my mama, yeah. and my sister, yeah. and uh, two daughters for my sister, yeah. and uh, eight people for my mom, work for my mom, for mm -hmm. in the mountain, mm -hmm. work for uh, fish flower, throw oh, flower. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I give you a little bit money, not big, because I'm not very rich. I'm not rich mm -hmm. man. I poor. I tell mm -hmm. you the truth. Yeah, I I'm not understand. rich. I give you a little bit money to help you, a little bit, couple hundred baht, okay? Huh? I give to you a couple hundred baht. One hundred baht. Yes. No. What? No. I not want nothing. Not need nothing, okay? No. I give to you present, okay? No, one hundred baht. No, one. Pay me one hundred baht. One hundred baht for silo for Thai. Yes, I give you. I give you breakfast. Big one, no important. Okay, I give you five hundred baht. No. Well, well, how much you want? What's that? How much you want? I ask you, you have shower. Work. I not want work. I, I I give you shower. I give you shower. You're out of your fucking mind. You know this? I not do nothing wrong to you. I give you breakfast. I, I not sleep with you. I not sleep with you. I not do nothing to you. I look after you. I give you breakfast. You I give you ju juice. I not do nothing. What do you think I do? I, I not do to me. I I I I I not do it here. Here we go. No, for working. Here. Here's here, five hundred. No. no. Five hundred. No. Okay. No. Here. Here you go. No. No. I not make big money. No. This is ridiculous. Okay. No. Here. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. No. I had enough. Goodbye. No, one thousand, okay. Stop. One thousand? Mm -hmm. For what? I not have sex with you. No. I take you for fucking food. I give you maximum seven hundred. No. Goodbye. One thousand. That's all I have. No, no. Okay. Okay. Thousand baht. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Out now. Out. Take your stuff and get out of my room. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs>
Where are you from? Taiwan. Where? Taiwan. You want to God, you're beautiful. Yeah, How much? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars? Yeah. How much for extra? Extra fifty dollars. Huh? Extra fifty dollars. I come back to I just How much for massage? Fifty dollars. With extras? Yeah. What? Yeah. How much for extra? Hello, I am Lana and I want to say hello. I have been a fan of the Archie Luxury program for over 12 months. And you know what? I love his channel. Congratulations on achieving 12 million YouTube views. I'm so happy that you're making YouTube videos full time. It's very hard to make money from the internet, especially if you're 30 kilos overweight and cannot sing or dance. But uh, you know, with the YouTube, I've got 6,100,000 views now. You know how many views a month I'm getting? 400,000 views a month. That's great, isn't it? And I, I've worked out how many views I need to have a full-time job doing YouTube. You know how many views I need? No. I need a million views a month. A month. A million views a month, and I can make videos full-time. So, mm. it, you know, I want to try and tell the viewers out there, if you want to get me going full-time, they got to get their friends. they got to send, get their friends to try and watch me. What, how else can I encourage them to get more views? Tell me. Make it more general, like this doing things might be good. Yes. Love you, Archie Luxury. Люблю тебя, Archie. <laughs> Take care. The Archie Luxury Dating Site Addiction. What do I say? It was so embarrassing. You know, I'm a technology type person and um, I got a, uh, I got a couple profiles. What would, what would I do? I had the Tinder, the Badu, I had the Date in Asia, I had the OK Cupid, I had the, uh, what else did I have there? I had the Plenty of Fish, <coughs> I had the Red Pie, <coughs> and the Adult Matchmaker itself there. And I gotta tell you a secret that no one knows the reason the name Archie Luxury came up there was many years ago I became um, addicted to dating sites and I needed to think of a fantastic anonymous name for a profile on Adult Matchmaker and it was Archie Luxury. And uh, I, I was trying to, trying to uh, <coughs> just test a few things out. But I gotta tell you guys, I gotta tell you, this dating site addiction, all these women, all these ex-wives, girlfriends, uh, mistresses, bits on the side, holiday romances, uh, all these lovely ladies who I have wined, dined, and taken out. You know something? Turn 45, and how many of these girls do you think sent me? Happy birthday, Archie. How many sent me a well wish? How many do you think sent me a well wish? And these are girls who, you know, I asked them to iron a shirt. They would kiss the collar. They would um, always ask me, what would I like to buy? <clears throat> what would I like to buy? I remember having 12 pairs of cufflinks sent to me at various gifts. And uh, now I can't even, can't even get a, a text message, happy birthday out of her. This is how it is. And how many, how many of them sent me well wishes? Zero, 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 wah, 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 wah. Fall of Archie Luxury, where does it begin? In 2013, Archie was certifiably out of his mind. Not only had Archie's hoarding and collecting gone crazy, but Archie's financing program was really insane. 
Archie had chalked up nearly $100,000 of high interest consumer finance. High finance. We're talking of interest rates. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20%. 20% finance. All Archie cared was that he could get easy come consumer credit to fuel the binge of excess and luxury goods. Fuel the binge. That is what Archie wanted. The madness really got out of hand. Luxury goods, luxury goods, luxury goods. Two Patek Philippe wristwatches. Two Patek Philippe wristwatches. A Breguet, a Royal Oak, and a a uh, Jaeger Le Coutre Reverso. It was out of hand. And Archie's um, collecting phase really knew no bounds. It was just, what would you say there? It was insane, insane. No normal person can, how can any normal person finance these things? That is the, that is the hard part. And with Archie, he only ever had a lower middle class job in a waste processing plant. I mean, he wasn't really executive material, but the buying never stopped. 82000 on credit card consumer debt. Archie used every financial instrument to leverage himself and build the collection. Archie's father had actually paid off Archie's car at one stage with the help of a small inheritance Archie got. Archie's father agreed to pay the other half personally. So what did Archibald Chesterfield III do? Well, he actually used, he actually used that credit, that title-free car to get finance. He financed it again against his father's wishes to build the lust of material goods, the lust of materialism, the lust of expensive items. Hard case Louis Vuitton suitcases, they were taller than Archie was himself. The obsession with gaining a collection of note really drove Archie to the brink of insanity. He started to talk to his possessions like they were people. The insanity didn't stop there. Archie was on the hunt for the next purchase. What to buy next, how to grow the collection, how to get more, how to get more enjoyment, how to get more sustenance, how to get more out of his flamboyant luxury goods collection. There was never enough. The consumer cycle of constantly buying to give him a temporary up was very short-lived. The craziness that was Archie Luxury, geez, did it get bad. Archie went to a local park with all his precious material goods to photograph them, talk about them, and uh, it really was a very, very weird situation. Archibald was consumed with hoarding, looking at, possessing material goods material goods. The credit cards were running on empty. They were max. They were Pepsi. They were running to the max. Archie's high and lows would be determined whether he could get some sleazy consumer credit. It really was a bad way for Uncle Archie to be. This was a a situation where his whole meaning and happiness in life was determined on his possessions. The hoarding, the possessing, the owning, the controlling. It was a situation which really was untenable. This sort of this sort of desire to own material goods can't ever be healthy. It took a huge cost. Friends, family, and Archie's sanity were the cost of his constant materialistic means. The insanity of Archie's collecting and hoarding and possessing knew no bounds. Archie didn't care whether the goods he collected were ladies' goods or men's goods. 
One could say this is a, uh, a similarity to most hoarders. They don't actually even need to use the goods to suffer, to have the, the enjoyment of possessing and owning the goods. Archie collected a lot of ladies' goods, which could seriously be, be questioned as to why he would need this. A lot of Archie Luxury's goods themselves there didn't actually work. Archie's Audemars Piguet Royal Oak had a, uh, needed a uh, rather expensive repair in order to function correctly. But that didn't seem to matter to the hoarder that was Archie. Because Archie just needed to possess it. He needed to know that he owned an Audemars Piguet piece in order to be satisfied and fulfilled that his dreams had been accomplished. The crazy excess that was Archie Luxury would eventually come crashing down. The goods themselves there that Archie fought so hard to possess and to own would eventually need to be sold off to reduce this $82,000 worth of consumer credit. The outcome wasn't pretty. The journey was very painful. And Archibald Chesterfield III really never recovered once his goods were put to market and sold off. Owning goods for the sake of possessing and hoarding is one of the evils the Bible talks about. Archibald Chesterfield III had many traits of greed, lust and desire. Material goods gave Archie a place in the world and unfortunately it was the same goods that meant that he would have to be burdened with high finance consumer finance to be able to afford these items these items were the goods of millionaires and very rich folk and uh, Archibald Chesterfield the third didn't really have the income or the asset base or the family to be able to afford these goods. Archibald Chesterfield III came crushing down to earth. He came crushing down hard. He hit the surface badly. The recovery was slow. The depression was severe. This is the story of Archibald Chesterfield III. The craziness, the madness, the excess lingers to this day. That's what I've done. Look at this. I'm looking at a jet star. I've got commercial aviation. This is commercial aviation. It's coming in fast. It's coming in furious. And I've done it to get this footage for the channel. That's right. For you. you don't just freak fluke this stuff, guys. You don't fluke this stuff. You want to get good footage. You want to get amazing video. You got to put yourself out there. You got to plan these things. You got to plan it, big boy. Uh, I've been all around Asia. I've been all around Asia to bring you some delights of the trip. And uh, many exciting things have happened for good old Archie. Yes, good old Archie. He's had a wonderful trip to Asia and uh, he's gone to the following places. Singapore, he's gone to Hong Kong and he's gone to Bangkok. Let me know what you think. And uh, I, I think the uh, for the title of Asia's nastiest, Asia's nastiest fucking colony, there's many nasty fuckers out there. Is it Singapore? Is it Hong Kong? Is it um, Bangkok? What is the nastiest, the nastiest place to visit? And uh, there's some nasty fuckers around. They're everywhere. Real nasty fuckers. And uh, I got to tell you, a lot of these Asian places, nasty, nasty. You've got arrogant fucking Hong Kong, Chinese, you've got the Singaporeans, uh, nasty fuckers. And uh, I got to say, some of the, uh, the Bankanese, the Bangkok, Bangkok fuckers, the Thai fuckers, they're getting pretty nasty. 
they're getting pretty nasty indeed. So uh, I want to hear about Asia's nastiest country. What do you think Asia's nastiest country is? Hello, I'm Archie Luxury, and I'm coming to you live from Singapore. Singapore, what a wonderful city. Probably the greatest city on earth here. This is absolutely fantastic. And uh, we're bringing the Archie Luxury we're bringing the Archie Luxury Channel up a notch. International city for an international YouTube celebrity, Singapore. The greatest city on earth. I'm coming to you live from Hong Kong. Hong Kong, that's right, fuckers. Oriental fuckers, I'm in Hong Kong. Asia's nastiest country. Asia's nastiest nation. And uh, I gotta tell you, it is a culture shock. Hong Kong, Asia's nastiest fucking city. That's right, Hong Kong, Asia's nastiest, nastiest fucking city. And I gotta tell you, the uh, the Hongkinese are nasty fuckers, unhelpful, nasty fuckers, miserable cunts. And today I'd like to talk about Thailand, and in particular, Bangkok, Oriental City. And I gotta tell you, Bangkok itself there, it's a wonderful city, absolutely wonderful. I love Bangkok. I think it's probably one of the greatest Asian countries. And uh, you know, Hong Kong is lovely, expensive. Singapore is pristine, fucking expensive. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, the Asian, you know, Malaysia, you got Indonesia, yeah, yeah, but Singapore and uh, look fuckers, Hong Kong, Singapore, Bangkok is my pick of international Asian cities and I just love, I love Bangkok. One of the things I love so much is the Thai's attitude. Yes, they'll rip you off as soon as look at you, of course, of course, you're a fucking foreign foreigner and uh, you're there for the picking, but they do it with a smile. Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III, and uh, this is my, my study desk at the Hyatt, fuckers, that's right, the Hyatt. That's, uh, that's the hotel that I'm currently residing in, in Jakarta, Indonesia. And uh, I, I would just like to, I would just like to reflect on um, the Archie Luxury Channel. We would we would like to uh, we would like to reflect on this great journey. And uh, fuckers, nasty foul mouth fuckers that you are! I gotta tell you, I want to see these pretenders, these pretenders who are stealing my ratings. Where the fuck is their international travel? Where the fuck is their five star accommodation? Where the fuck? Is anything really exciting? Coming to you live from my bathroom at the Grand Hyatt, Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, I want quality content, so just just bear with me, and um, I'll try my best to get you the content you deserve. Hello, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury Reflection Series, and today I'd like to talk about the low point in travelling. The low point in travelling is. Uh, when you travel halfway around the world and uh, the place you've gone to is crap. That's right, crap. The Archie Luxury Channel coming to you live from Japan, bringing you exciting, fascinating things, showing you amazing things in the world. Archie Luxury, the only true luxury goods content provider in existence. And uh, today I'm coming to you live from Fiji, tropical paradise. That's right, Banana Republic, fuckers! Banana Republic. And in Fiji, they're nasty fuckers. Nasty, nasty fuckers! If you want to go to the sand dunes, if you go through the national, the Fiji National Park, there's a $15 fucking fee. If you want to go to a waterfall, of course, there's a fee. If you want to go, you know, it's just these little fucking things. They're gouging all the way. Things of beauty should not 
be fucking controlled by assholes who want to exploit it. This is a beautiful, sunny, gorgeous Auckland. And uh, I'm in the city centre here, and it's an absolute bitch. This is a mean place to be. I mean, not only is the weather fucking awful, it's cold, it's damp, it's wet. This is a highly priced, highly expensive city. And uh, I don't know why the fuck anyone would want to come here. And uh, I gotta tell you, Okinawa, this is a shit city. I haven't been impressed with it. It's overpriced. It's just one big rip-off and uh, I'm really happy to be getting out of this place very soon. Hello, Archie Luxury reporting live from Vietnam. I mean Vietnam, that's right fuckers. I finally, finally went on the Vietnamese tour and uh, I'm in Hoi An, Hoi An. And I gotta tell you the truth fuckers, this ain't no fucking Thailand. It ain't no Thailand at all. It's um very different it's very different here it's uh it looks like thailand it smells like thailand but let me tell you this it is not fucking thailand fuckers and today i'd like to reflect on sydney sydney fuckers what did i think what is the the street feeling and uh, i had a great time in sydney a lot of nasty cunts there it's fucking expensive sydney is expensive and uh, I've got to say, you know, Sydney itself, even the beggars, the panhandlers, the street urchins, they're all nasty, vicious cunts. They're just nasty and vicious. It's, uh, it's an aggressive city. Almost as nasty as the toilets I had to use in Melbourne. Right. Look at this. This is one of the grubbiest, dirtiest, nastiest toilets I've ever seen in my life. And... Uh, I went out with the sucker horn and some fans on uh, Thursday night and um, I wanted to go and use the toilet and this is the disgusting, horrid mess I had to endure. An absolute horror of a toilet. Just dirty, grubby, graffiti. This is Melbourne. Welcome to Melbourne. Everyone's got their rights in Melbourne. Oh yes, I'll tell you that much now. Those nasty Melbournians. My God, do they know how to graffiti and make make a Queenslander feel unwelcome, guys. Seven eight seven Dreamliner. Why they make emergency landing here? But they say you the emergency landing is problem. With There's this, what problem? The, the machine, the machine, small problem. What problem? Small problem. Small uh, problem. They throw a hundred thousand dollars worth of aviation fuel I, I into the air. I don't know. But small problem. problem. Small but problem. <laughs> they not deploy the chutes. The chutes when they land, the yeah. airline chutes come out. Yeah. It's one hundred fifty thousand dollars to put those back yeah. in the plane. I, but this what, what problem? Small problem I, with I, what? I, I, don't, I don't know what, what the problem. But this from the technical, this, they have information. For me, I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So sorry. that's okay. Uh, maybe you ask this with. I him. will. Yeah. I will yeah. ask yes. them. Okay. Tell the captain to come here. I'll I want to talk to your captain. Okay. Please, please. Thank you. Do you not check the oil pressure system before you put my life at risk? Yeah, I checked already. Um, I no one want to be like this, sir. I nearly died! Hey, listen to me, please, and calm down, sir. I nearly died today. Do you understand? Excuse me, not only you, sir. Our cabin crew also. I nearly died! Hey, listen to me, please, and calm down, sir. I nearly died today. Do you understand? Archie Luxury, the world traveler. One thing Archie Luxury and the Archie Luxury channel has done is to bring tourists to Australia to see this wretched land. The land of high prices and full retail. Archie recently highlighted the beauty of Sydney and even though his negativity was there, nothing could hide the fact that the harbour the Opera House and the Sydney Harbour Bridge are absolutely gorgeous. Archie has gone out on a limb many times and one of the great things is, is the joy and the fluke of luck Archie's had in capturing some fantastic video. In fact, on a recent trip when he was flying out of Sydney, he got some amazing footage from the aircraft Jetstar, mind you, of the Opera House, the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Sydney CBD. 
all captured on Archie's iPhone. What a fantastic take of events. Archie's been able to document wonders like the, the great Sydney Opera House to the punters. To the punters. Archie's been all around Australia for the Archie Luxury Channel. Hello, I'm Paul Pluter and welcome to the Archie Luxury Program. And today I want to show you this is some of the most magnificent spots in Australia. And uh, you don't really get to see much of the good life on the Archie Luxury Channel because I really find it easier to talk about negatives. But I just want to show you, this is uh, a local park that I, um, <clears throat> I come down to, the River Rocks Park. And uh, I just want to show you some of the, uh, the hidden beauty of this place. It's very, very, very beautiful. And uh, it's, just, it's just breathtaking. And uh, although I'm, I sound fairly depressed at times, it's very nice to have natural resources like this, which I can use as a backdrop for my YouTube channel. There is a nice side to Australia and uh, it's this peaceful, tranquil wilderness. And I gotta tell you, it's days like this here where you come down and have a sticky beak. It's really quite magic. You can't buy this type of shit. How did YouTube destroy your life, Archie? How did YouTube destroy my life? How did YouTube destroy my life? You want me to tell you how YouTube destroyed my life? Look, I've got to tell you the honest truth there. YouTube is a bit of a double-edged sword, a bit of a poison chalice, because you can be boring and politically correct, but no one watches you. No one watches you. They want to be entertained. This is... You gotta remember, YouTube is about entertainment. So I've taken a bit of a stance. I've, I've said certain watches are crap. I've tried to tell the truth. I, you know, I, I've, I've gotta be completely honest with you. I'm quite proud of the work I've presented on YouTube. How it's wrecked my life is that I'm completely unemployable. This is how it's wrecked my life is that I've applied, I've lost jobs because of my YouTube characters. 
I've uh, <clears throat> when I've applied for work, they do a bit of a Google search on my real name. Sure enough, Archibald Chesterfield the third pops up in their search, and uh, that's the end of it. Then is it? That's the end of the exercise. They don't want to be associated. They don't want to take any sort of corporate risk. They don't want to. They don't want to venture out and and do anything risky to the corporate scene. They're very very. Would you would you em employ you though? Would you employ you? The problem is also some of my. <laughs> that doesn't uh, answer the question. <laughs> probably not. You know, this is the truth. I've exposed too much. I've exposed parts of myself, which probably best not exposed. You, you know, I, I did that. Uh, thank you, KBR, when they gave me the boot. I did. Uh, I started that series. Why the IT industry sucks. When you're actually placing yourself as an IT professional, when you've made a series on why the IT industry sucks, it doesn't quite go over so well. South African travel was another South, one. South African travel. John, the list goes on. I've tried to be truthful. And how has YouTube wrecked my life? Well, I got to tell you, it's okay. YouTube was going along fine. It was going along fine. I was starting to earn decent money on YouTube for the Google ads. And then we had the Google ads ad apocalypse. The Google ads ads apocalypse. And what happened was, what happened? They decided I had my 8,476 videos on YouTube and they decided that they would demonetize any video where you said some swear words, politically incorrect words, F and C's and sh you know, any, any kind of, <coughs> they must have had some, some Mormon censoring my stuff because at 8,476 8, videos, I had about 87, which were uh, considered fit for advertisers. So it's fi financially affected you? Financially or? ruined. I'm unemployable. The Google apocalypse has hit me hard. I, I basically, my Google ads revenue has gone from a, it's gone from minimum wage down to half minimum wage. With the poverty line. That's exactly what's happened. And, and yeah. I've got to tell you too, I've also had a huge personal cost. You know, my, uh, my, my recent wife, she left because I had, ex she didn't like to be married to somebody who wasn't that faithful and kind of put it on YouTube. See, when you're a personality and you put things out there, sometimes it comes back to, to bite you in the ass. That's exactly what's happened. It's relationship wise. I have, I have gone on many dates and I gotta be completely honest with you. The girls have said, Oh, I said, what do you do? I said, I'm a YouTube celebrity. Oh, wow. Let me, that sounds great. They get really excited. That's, you're a YouTube celebrity. You make videos. Yes, 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 yes. What's the name? Oh, Archie Luxury. Then they Google you. Then they Google it. They, hang on a minute. You've got videos on Thai hookers. You got videos on threesomes? I think I had one girl said to me, uh, you called it a sandwich? What is a sandwich, Archie? A sandwich? <laughs> I mean, what do you do? What do you do? It's just absolutely disastrous. Relationships have been, they've been killed with about 20 minutes of Googling. 20 minutes of Googling my name. They've suddenly realized that I'm not, because they thought I was the politically correct, the, the nice, well-mannered guy. Oh, you talk about travel. Oh, that's interesting. What do you talk about? Oh, you talk about whoring. Oh, you talk about Bangkok. Oh, Archie, what are you doing? That's not, that's not, not that's not, not what we wanted. We wanted the good, we wanted the, um, the long-term relationship lover, the one who was looking for a soulmate. You're looking for a sex partner, Archie. You're looking for bang per buck in a bad way. Does this affect you when you when you're just walking down the street, not as Archie Luxury? When you just it affects me everywhere. I've had. Um, it's just look. It, it it can't leave you. You can never be normal again. I can never revert back to normality. I cannot rewalk. I cannot revert back to being just a normal. Normal, anonymous, overweight, middle-aged, lower middle-class, white guy. I can't do it. It's, 
The genie is out of the bottle. I can't put that bastard, I can't put that bitch back in the bottle. That bitch won't go in there. And she's seen my videos. She's seen my fucking videos. She's seen the video. She told her girlfriend, oh, be careful with him. Be careful with him. You'll catch something. You'll catch something. And uh, it's, it's my career is absolutely, absolutely over. My financial means is absolutely over. Marriages, jobs, uh, everything has gone bad. Thanks to YouTube. Thank you, Google YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Google, you fuckers. Hello, Archibald Chesterfield the third, AC3. And today I want to talk to you about the human cost of YouTube. I gotta be honest with you fuckers. It's a hard business. Very fucking hard. It's a nasty business. People will befriend you and spit you fucking out. I've been used in this industry. I've been used, abused, and spat out. Washed out, has been, never was. Don't let YouTube destroy your life. Don't fucking do it. You want to start a channel? Maybe not a good idea, fuckers.
movie and uh, just move this over here. Come and, come and give me a cuddle, John. Uh, I just wanted to say that John was the executive producer in the movie and, and we're actually now looking at our next movie adventure. What we're looking at doing is we're trying to raise $10,000 and uh, the movie, the movie is going to be called Archie Does, Archie Does Asia. Sounds a good topic. Yeah, Archie Sounds Does Asia. Topic. It's from the Debbie Does Dallas franchise. Do you so, remember Debbie, yeah, Debbie, Debbie Does Dallas? That was yeah, famous movie. Yeah. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to be looking for some crowdfunding, some funding. We're trying to raise ten thousand dollars. So basically, me and you. We're going to put a mobile phone on my prick. <laughs> we'll put a mobile phone with you. And basically, oh, we're going to go Hong Kong, Bangkok, Singapore, Vietnam, oh. looking for Archie to find love. Oh, be what beauty. Do you think? Archie to find love. So we're looking at some crowdfunding, and uh, this is the next movie in the franchise, which is Archie. Da what, what's a good title? Archie looking for Archie luxury, looking for love. What's a, what's the title for this new movie? This Archie in Asia. Archie in Asia. Archie in uh, Asia. Ah, Archie in Asia. Okay, okay. So, guys, just, just take your phone. Sheila called Asia. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the plan. What do you think, John? Would you? Good go, idea. Would you go? We probably need two to three weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going. Where would we land first? Bangkok. Hong Kong? Bangkok. I thought. Oh, we're... Go, go. Singapore, Bangkok, Manila, Hong Kong, back to Bangkok. Singapore. Bangkok. Bangkok. Manila. Manila. Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Go to Vietnam. Vietnam. Cambodia, Bangkok. Yeah, what do you reckon? So we need about a month. We need a month. Me and you will be filming, right? Yeah. You'll be filming. We'll be uh so guys, so that would be for a com that basically that that cost is for airfares. For airfares, me and you. accommodation, living. Airfares, accommodation we'll and live for a month and it. paid providers. Yeah. The actresses. Yes, and gaffers you know, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, stuff, stuff <laughs> like that. So, Archie Luxury in Asia, the next movie in the franchise. So, uh, what do you reckon? 10000 we'd need? Is, is that a fair budget or not? Am I being stupid? Or what do you think? Let's see what the first one comes out like first. <laughs> the movie's <laughs> done. Andy. We've done the movie. We've yeah. done the movie, John. We've, we're about to release it. What do they get for their 10 grand? Well... Special citation, of course. Well, no, no, well, no, well, well. The other thing is too. If you like this video, we can also put it through the the cinema. We can release it in in private cinemas. What about them? Somebody offered a hundred grand rights the other day, and what? Yeah, what yeah. 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 Oh. Tell us, tell us. Oh, jeez, John, I got oh. offered a hundred thousand sponsorship from a guy who I might add has given me about a hundred and fifty dollars. It's a big difference between 150 dollars and 150 grand. Yeah, sucker horn burnt that one. You burnt it, Jono! You burnt it! Because he said, sucker horn said he was a troll. I said so. he was trolling you. I didn't say he was a troll. I said he was trolling you. Yeah. I haven't he's, seen 100 yet. Well, he's, he's backed out of the whole deal. He backed out of the whole deal. 100 grand. It's Look, that's the Archie way of life. That's the Archie. Sometimes it's good to be independent. <laughs> you know, I've got to be honest with you. It's good to keep the movie independent. So we're going to strap a couple of iPhones onto onto Archie and Jono as we look for Archie in Asia. Might have to resurrect those glasses again, mate. We're going to see if we can find that Nana Kim. Oh, you can go chasing her. Fair uh, she was a good sort, you know. Oh, really? She'd be around still. She'll be around there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, she'll be around. She'd be telling all the friends. They had this young fat guy who gave her a thousand baht and they didn't yeah. even need to sleep with him. Yeah, it was grass. You know? Best part, we went up from 100 to 100 to 200 to 500 to 700 <laughs> to a grand in about, <laughs> in about two, two minutes. Yes. Oh, that was staunch. <laughs> yes. Well, no, no, kid. Anyway, yeah. chief features in the movie. Chief features she's in, in the, the movie. movie. She's that's in the feature. I think that's a thousand baht well spent, oh, don't you? I, I would buy that footage again and oh. again. If I could get more of that footage, that footage is priceless. She's marvellous. She was marvellous. It was priceless. What about me? I'll give you a couple of hundred bucks. You know? Hundred baht. Oh no, <laughs> no. Oh, she backed out of that real oh, quick. Oh no, great. that was a great. One hundred baht is nothing to die people. She, oh yeah, yes. right. Oh. Yes, that's All exactly. Right. She got more though. <laughs> yes. No, that was a great, great start there. Great story. 
And uh, yeah, that's that's how it goes, Jono. That is how it goes. So uh, yeah, Archie Luxury, the movie. Uh, next one is Archie Luxury <clears throat> in Asia. Archie in Asia. Archie in Asia. The sequel. So, so basically, I think what we'd have to do is airfares would be about two each. That's four. Yeah. Accommodation would be grand. And we'd need a few little actresses to play little honeys. Mm. Because... A um, week or so. Yeah, what do you reckon? For a week or so in the casting couch. Casting couch. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, I'm talking we'll about make, a couple of mates that did that, didn't they? What's that? They had these business cards made up. Yes. You know, you know Charlie, you know, Charlie Black and, you know, Fred Brown. Yes. Film producers. Yes. And they you know, and they had all these cards made up and they went over to Miller and put an ad in the paper. Yes. You know, uh, wanted young actri- actresses for uh, the movie. Yes. You know, meet at the Manila Hotel one o'clock Friday. Yes. I reckon the queues were hundreds of metres, you know, long, all out of, all down the corridor of the hotel, down the stairs, out reception, hundred metres down the street they were. These two old pervs, you know, interviewing the young girls. You know, sake a little card. You know, they're getting shots and everything for them. Oh, no, you're no good. I will need some snapshots. Oh, we used to bring them into work. We used to watch them all day long. It was beautiful. I don't think it happened now. I think you're going to get into big trouble for that, John. Yeah, we're women, women are a bit more smarter than that. Okay, <laughs> Archie in Asia, the sequel. Coming soon. Coming soon! Good stuff. Okay, how do I press this button? Stop. Stop! Stop.